Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're talking about healthier choices management, taking some more HCMC. In this video, we're going to be addressing to the reverse split that has been seen flying around every, you know, so often here and there. And we're going to talk about the reverse split on why that's very unlikely to happen for HCMC, even after the possibility of winning the lawsuit, why that wouldn't be on their agendas. You know, that really brings out more bad than they're brings in good. But we're also going to be talking about even if there is a reverse split, what would be the goods that comes out of it. And so that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. We're also going to be looking at some of the um, data being given for HCMC. We're going to be talking about this first. Make sure you guys watch until the very end. As always, show support for HCMC by smashing that like button down below. On that, let's get straight into the video. So this is the first thing. And so this is HCMC has a total of seven retail vape stores, which are located in Florida, Georgia, and Tennessee. So we've talked about the vape stores before, but here's a comparison of June 30, 2021. The cash, we have $29 million. December 31st, 2020, with only 925,000. Obviously, 925,000 is still a lot of cash, but in comparison to 29 million, that's obviously, you know, very little. So, HMC was able to grow their company with only 925,000 in cash going into Q1 of 2021. They then proceeded to turn a profit in Q2 of 2021 by reducing their operating expenses. So all of these were done before they had the 29 million in cash. So far, we haven't heard anything, you know, in terms of what uh, they are doing with the cash in terms of expansion and other stuff. But that doesn't mean there is no potential for HTMC in the long run. So we have Q3 coming up, so we should really keep a watch for what happens then. But also remember that they are saving most of the money for the lawsuit because that is ultimately what's important for HTMC. And so they obviously want to save their money for the lawsuit in case, you know, if something comes up. But, you know, I feel like it's definitely in the works of, you know, anything that is going to be regards to the expansion of HCMC. And so that's what the first thing I want to talk about. The second thing I want to talk about is this on trading 212, HCMC is actually the fifth most bought stock um, or at least watched out stock on HCMC um, on trading 212. Healthy Traces Management with 78,000 people. So that shows a lot of positivity for HCMC, again, showing there are buyers. But let's talk about the reverse split. I'm sure that's what everyone here. So I've seen it actually around on Reddit, on other YouTube comments, my YouTube comments, you know, and here on stock tweet. So what's the case for management team not putting forward a reverse split? Yes, it's share buyback if they win a court case, but you really think Jeff will spend the amount of cash on removing all those shares when he could use some on buying them off and then a reverse split doing the rest. So I want to talk about this. And firstly, you know, what he's asking, what's the case for the management team not paying them forward that reverse split? Now, to answer this question straightforward, firstly, they can't. Um, and if we go over here, so this is one of the things that they uploaded in April 20th, 2021, when they um, talked about their rights offering. They said here, before I discuss the present rights offering to our shareholders, I would like to state clearly this rights offering should not be confused with a reverse split. The company is not pursuing a reverse split concurrently or in conjunction with this rights offering. Please also note that in general, if the company's board of directors at some time in the future deem that it be in the best interest of the company and the shareholders to recommend a reverse split, it would have to send out a proxy to the common shareholders detailing its reasons, it would then need to be approved by shareholders owning over 50% of the common stock of the company. Without this majority shareholder approval, no reverse stock split can occur. So I want to make this kind of very clear in terms of why wouldn't he just do a reverse split? There needs to be a 50% um, of the common stock holders approval from that. Otherwise, a reverse split can't happen. So we won't one day just see, suddenly the company says, we're doing a reverse split. That won't happen. For those of you who hold HMC shares like myself, will obviously receive some sort of form in terms of, look, we are doing a reverse split. And, you know, are you approving or are you disapproving? And so that will have to happen. And so, you know, we just won't one day suddenly wake up and see HMC suddenly say we're doing a stock split. So that's what I want to make very clear in terms of everyone thinking that that's going to happen. There has to be a 50% a majority shareholder approval. So that's very important, guys. This is very important. Um, I'll link this, guys. In, this is said on Healthier Choices Management's website itself. And so that's what I want to talk about. And firstly, let's talk about why they wouldn't put in a reverse split. So 
it is in the best interest to do a buyback because firstly you gotta understand that them themselves, the owner, the CEO, the other founders, executives all own a large portion of HCMC shares. And the fact that if HCMC were to go up, they actually benefit more than any of us. So obviously we'll benefit from HCMC increasing in price, but they will benefit a hell of a lot more. And so it's in their best interest to do anything that will increase the share price in the actual value of the share price. What I mean by that is for those of you who aren't aware, reverse split doesn't actually change the value of a company. It only changes the amount of shares outstanding. So for example, HMC having over obviously over 300 billion shares, but in this case we're saying 300 billion. If they have 300 billion shares and we, you know, and they do a reverse split, the share price, the outstanding shares can go from 300 billion to 30 billion, which is a division of 10, but that doesn't mean there will be a change in the actual value of the company. The company market cap still goes from 300 million to 300 million. There will be no change in that. And so a reverse split doesn't actually help them out. And that's why it's again in their best interest to do a share buyback. You know, I definitely feel like a share buyback will be something that they will, you know, it's almost a 90% kind of confirmation that they will do a share buyback because it's in their best interest. Again, I am not a financial advisor, so do take what I've said, Graham. So make sure you do your own diligence and research. But that's what I think is very important. And so, you know, this is something that you've got to understand. Also, when he could just use some on buying them off and then reverse split doing the rest. Firstly, you guys got to understand if they were to get a settlement fee, the settlement fee is obviously for the company that they can obviously do some ways in terms of giving that money to themselves, but that's obviously a different story. So they won't, they can't use the company shares to buy stock for themselves. They get, there are definitely ways around it. You know, they can buy shares and then issue it as a way of payment, you know, different other hit, you know, there are different strategies, but they can't just do it outright. And so again, it's in their best interest to increase the actual value of the share price. So that's why a reverse split is very unlikely because not only does reverse split kind of, um, you know, not do anything in terms of the value of the price, if anything, it's actually going to decrease the value of the shares because firstly, if they do a reverse split, I'm sure no one in the HCMC community will be happy with that decision. Obviously, if there is no actual context behind it, no one will be happy with it and will definitely sell HCMC shares, causing the price to go down and they're actually losing out a lot more in the long run because if they manage to win this lawsuit, not only do they benefit a lot in the short run, they already have, they will gain, you know, they already have so much attention, not only that, but they will gain a lot more attention going into the future, of course, making them the ability to 10x, 100x their current market price. And so, you know, it's a Again, in their best interest to not do that, and so that's why again, there's highly, you know, I highly doubt it because people will start selling their shares. Normally, when you see a reverse split on the stock, you see the share actually drop in the price, in the value, and so that's why again, I don't feel like they're going to do a reverse split. But let's talk about, you know, why they would do a reverse split, why it would be beneficial for them in a way. Now, we definitely have just talked about why they wouldn't, but. That doesn't mean that in the, a very, very long future that they wouldn't because there are still benefits of doing a reverse split. Because the way we look at this is because if they were to buy back uh, you know, their shares, we don't know how much they reduce in terms of the amount of shares outstanding, but let's say they bring it down to say 100 billion or even, you know, we've done this multiple times. We'll say 100 billion for this case, right? And if they bring it down to 100 billion, we're still at a very high price in terms of the share price but if we want to see them actually grow in the long run we definitely want them to see them being listed on the nasdaq being on exchange the way to do that is actually you have to have a bid price of three dollars for your own stock price and so if they can't they obviously have a hard time to reach that if they have 100 billion shares outstanding and so one thing they would do is to obviously do a reverse split which brings up the value of the share price. So, you know, if they do it, it could go from 0.1 to $1 or to $3, depending on the reverse split that they are obviously doing. But again, nothing in terms of the actual market cap of the company. So if it's a hundred billion um, company, it still is a hundred billion. There will be no changes in that. They don't suddenly just turn to a trillion or, you know, whatever, right? And so that's why it could be beneficial. Being listed on the NASDAQ may seem like a bad thing in the first place, because again, we're gonna be seeing a lot of sellers. People won't be happy with reverse splits. 
The normal kind of um, thing that comes along with a reverse split is the company price dropping. But in the long run, when it's listed on NASDAQ, you are exposed to more companies out there and you're more likely to be bought up by hedge funds. And so that's why, you know, if there are obviously pros in that. And so in the kind of um, short term, definitely after the lawsuit, I don't see a reverse split happening. But I feel like when they grow as a company in the long run and they feel like the next step is to be listed on an exchange on the NASDAQ, then we could be seeing a reverse split. Anyway, guys, I hope that clears up the conclusion. Again, you know, we have a lot to talk about healthier choices and management. So make sure you guys smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, turn that notification bell so you never miss our video. Other than that, enjoy your day.